Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, my name's Claire and this is Yoli. I make videos all about houseplant care, sharing tips and tricks I've learned over the years to help keep your plants happy and healthy. And in today's video, I thought I'd give you a little tour of all of the plants I've got down here in my bedroom. I think I've got about 50 or 60 altogether. And as I've mentioned before, my bedroom doesn't get the best natural light. It's a north facing basement, so that can be challenging. But yes, I'm just gonna walk you through, talk you through all of the plants I've got down here and I really hope you enjoy it. Yoli thinks we're going out. Oh, hello. <laughs> right, so let's start through here in my little toilet. <laughs> this is a Sansevieria kirkii, which has been here pretty much since I moved in, which has been about a year now. So all of these plants have pretty much been in the same positions for about a year. So yeah, this one is amazing at coping in pretty much any conditions. It doesn't get a huge amount of natural light in here, especially because I've got my big one in the window there, but it seems really happy. It has never complained. It's a great air purifying plant. Snake plants are fab. We love snake plants. And then here I've got my White Princess Philodendron, which is one of my favourite plants. I showed you her when she was a teeny tiny leaf cutting and I just can't get over how much she's grown in this past year. It's absolutely crazy. She's got some, uh, kind of as it goes up, some really beautiful variegated leaves that have started to come out. I mean, look at that one. Isn't that just gorgeous? But yeah, she's kind of a bit lower variegated down here, but still it's kind of like a lovely dappled, speckled, pretty, pretty variegation. But um, you can probably see that I've bubble wrapped my windows. I do this with most of my windows that I've got plants right up against, especially at this time of year, just because it helps to insulate the windows. So if you put plants like this one with her leaves kind of touching it, you don't have to worry about them getting cold damage or anything like that. But it can also be amazing to do during the summer months as well, because direct sun coming through can burn quite a lot of plants leaves and if you do that then it just kind of helps act as a filter sorry my hand just went to sleep <laughs> helps act as a filter meaning that they won't kind of scorch in the same way that they would otherwise but yes that is that one um i've got a little mini cactus down here which i can't actually remember the name of i'm pretty sure it was just sold as cactus mix and at one point i did look up all the names but can't remember that one so i'll look that up and put it on the screen and then here i've got one of my philodendron milano christens propagating in water this one's doing really well actually i'll try and take it out and show you yeah you can see its little roots starting to form and it's yeah doing well this is one of the ones that was hit really badly by thrips and i decided to chop up you can see on the leaf all the thrip damage from before but touch wood all of the cuttings i propagated have taken and i've potted a couple up already and they're doing well so i'm really hoping i'll be able to get kind of my big full plant back how she was but yes that is all the plants in there not many as i say because it's not the best but here start at this end i've got a lucky bamboo that i actually inherited from a friend and it's in this jar i can't get it out because the roots have kind of expanded but it's in this jar thing and as you can see it is just full of algae like the amount of times i've emptied it out and all that sort of stuff and tried to change the water every time it comes back i know i should probably cover it up for a bit and try and let it die off but the plant seems to be fairly healthy despite that and i know that i probably should do something about it but that's just how it is at the moment so yeah it's got some new growth here which is really really pretty i just love that green it's just stunning but yeah so that's that one and then here I've got my Raphidophora tetrasperma. This is one that the last time I showed it on my channel was teeny. It was like a tiny little cutting that came up to about there. And now it's, I've given it a moss pole and it's climbing really beautifully. And it's actually huge. Like I'm trying not to show you outside my window, but there you go. You can kind of see she's really, really big and lovely. It's also known as Monstera minima and you can see why, because it's got those lovely splits in the leaves. But yeah, I was really tempted to let this one trail instead of climb because I love them as hanging plants. But I think I might, when she gets a little bit bigger, maybe to the top of the moss pole, I might kind of chop her back a bit and propagate her. She's got a new little growth point there as well, I've just noticed. But yeah, that's that one. 
and this is a Crassula ovata jade plant a lot smaller than my other one I'll show you my other one as well that I've got down here but you can see her leaves are absolutely tiny again what you can do is you can pinch off the growth at the top here and that will encourage them to branch out like in the same way that this one's done here so I might do that with her again to kind of make her a little bit more full but yeah she seems really happy there and then this one is an avocado tree that I propagated during lockdown. If you watched my avocado video that I made about how to do that, you'll have seen that in that video, I basically just chopped this one. Like I just chopped the top of it. I think I chopped it about there. And now she started to branch out as well. So that's a really good way of kind of making them a little bit fuller, bushier. But yeah, she's doing well. As I said as well, I do usually bubble wrap the whole bit of my window here as well, just at the bottom where the plants touch it. But I took that off to clean the window and I haven't put it back on yet. So yeah, I need to put that back on. Otherwise, especially plants like this will not be happy with their leaves touching the window when it's really, really cold. But yes, um, here I've showed you this one before. It is a variegated monstera cutting that is definitely ready to be potted up. I've been threatening to do that for such a long time and I just haven't got around to it. But look at this gorgeous new little leaf it's got. It's just so, so, so pretty. And it's doing really well in water, but I can tell like there's a few spots here that kind of make me think that it's probably a little bit malnourished. I haven't added any kind of like hydroponic fertilizer or anything, so... It probably needs some nutrients so yeah I need to pot her up soon I think I'm gonna do a repot and chat in the next couple of weeks so I will do that then this one is a Rapsilis bacif bacifaria I think that's right I got this one from B&Q in the sales section and it was looking really 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 unhappy I um, brought it home, I repotted it straight away because, I mean, even the pot it's in now doesn't have drainage, but I just take it out to water it when I do. But it had been really seriously overwatered and I ended up chopping loads of it back, propagating some bits and the rest, I think it's bounced back pretty well, to be honest. I mean, it's a plant that I don't really do much to. Like, I have just put her in this window, water her every few weeks when the soil feels dry and she's doing really, really well. So, yeah. Yeah, I don't have a lot to say about this plant apart from I love it and I don't do a lot to her. Um, down here, I've got a little Pothos Enjoy, which again was a cutting. I didn't have this plant before and I got this one off Etsy when it was about that big. Oh, you can't really see when I had about three leaves and this is growth from the last maybe two months. But yeah, it's doing really well. It's just giving me this new leaf here, which is so pretty. And yeah, moving on, I've got an Anthurium clarinervium. I've got quite a few of these just because I absolutely love them. And this leaf here is relatively new. It's only hardened up in the last kind of week, but it's just stunning. And down here as well. But the one on this side, so this is the original leaf that it came with and it had already been chopped back here. You can see it doesn't look in the best state. I've had to chop back this side as well just because it keeps kind of browning and I can't quite work out why. And I've been tempted to chop this whole leaf, but yeah, I, just, I don't know. I mean, at the moment I'm just kind of chopping it back and see how it goes. But as I say, the other growth looks healthy, happy. So I'm not worried. I'm not too worried, <laughs> um, but yeah, it's just such a beautiful, beautiful plant and it does move towards the light quite quickly. So this is one I rotate quite a lot. I did also have it over on my grow light shelf a little while ago. So I'll talk about that when I get to it, but that is that one. I've got another Philodendron Milano Kristen cutting here. This one, I think I'm probably gonna put up in sphagnum moss quite soon. Oh, can I get it out? Cause you can see, so for ages it wasn't doing anything. This is the one that I was really worried about. It literally just wasn't rooting. All of the other ones had rooted. One of them I'd even potted up and this one wasn't doing anything and then suddenly it started sprouting from sprouting a root from just one node. And actually there's a tiny little one on the higher node here as well now. But I'm just a little bit worried that because it's been in water for so long and it looks a little bit dark towards the end that I'm worried that it might start rotting. So I think I'm going to pop that in sphagnum moss fairly soon. But you can see it's got a little growth point. But yes, I'll pop that back in for now. 
Um, this is my Monstera Adansonii. I have shown you multiple Monstera Adansonii before. I love this plant so much. This is one that was kind of in rehab for a while. It was also really badly affected by thrips. I had to trim off quite a lot of leaves. As you can see, there's this whole kind of stretch of bare vine, which doesn't look great at the moment, but it does have nodes. So I could technically take some wet stick cuttings and propagate it. But for now, I think what I'm probably gonna do, haven't got around to doing it yet, is just kind of place them back in the soil, pin them in, water it and cover it with a bit of cling film or something. And hopefully that will start to produce really nice full growth again, because this is a plant that I propagated from literally nothing. Like it was a teeny tiny baby cutting at one point. So yeah, considering, considering what it's been through, it's doing all right. Um, and he uh, showed you this one not too long ago. This is a Calindium, Calindium? Caladium lindenii. Um, it's got another name as well, Zor, Zorathel or something. I can't remember exactly specifically what it's called, but again, I'll put the name in. And this is another one that I've been a little bit worried about. I mean, you can see here, it's got some browning and it came like this with the leaf half chopped off. And to be honest, since I've got it, which has probably been about four months now it hasn't done anything at all and i don't know if that's just because we're outside of growing season or i haven't got it in the right spot it just hasn't really changed and it doesn't look bad it doesn't look unhealthy but i just kind of feel like i feel like it should be doing more <laughs> but that could just be me but yeah i'm just gonna monitor that one i sometimes switch it out to put under my grow lights as well so i'm kind of just playing about with what works and what doesn't trying not to move it about too much but yeah, just trying to figure out what it likes here again oh god another mini cactus i want to say potentially a blue matillo but i could be wrong about that um i didn't know this i literally knew this a few weeks ago because i spoke about it in a video but can't remember so again name will be in somewhere um but yeah little mini cactus uh, again probably should repot that at some point it's been in that pot for over a year the mini cactuses that you can buy are really really great because although they are so 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 small once you do pot them up and start giving them more light they do grow quite quickly like i've got one that's actually no it's not down here not down here upstairs i've got one that i'll show you at some point that has basically turned into kind of a fully a fully fledged big cactus and I started that as a little mini one. Um, here I have got my Ficus elastica tinnicky again doing well but I need to just be careful because again she's up against the window and I need to put my bubble wrap back there but she is just such a beautiful beautiful plant. It was another one that was hit with spider mites, spider mites back in about four months ago I think so yeah she's bounced back really well it's just given me this beautiful new leaf I just absolutely love the new leaves and how they kind of harden up but yeah no she is a gorgeous 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 plant um so yeah that is that window ledge and moving over here I've got my peace lily which I've showed you before this is actually if any of you watch my low light plants video the other day this one is the same one that was in the video looking really really wilted and unhappy and I said that I needed to give her a water they are just the best plants at telling you when they need a drink because they'll literally go Whoa, and be really really dramatic and then you'll give them some water and within half an hour that you can just almost watch it I've seen people do time lapses of it because you can just see them come back up so yeah she is back to her normal self looking pretty pretty good and here I've got some golden pothos cuttings I am constantly propagating this plant because it's getting so big and so long and yeah I'm I'm just kind of I don't know starting millions of new plants but also just having them there propagating I think just looks quite nice they're also amazing ones at coping in lower light conditions so this spot here doesn't get any kind of direct light the light outside is actually going now but it yeah doesn't get any direct light but she's really happy there and this one here so again this is another one that I spoke about in my low light plants video this is a euphorbia aquarensis and these are technically high light plants to be completely honest they're high light plants they do best in either bright and direct light or very low levels of sunlight but this one has been down here for oh well over a year just over a year yeah and is doing so well. I can't quite believe it. I mean, it's not even like she stopped growing. I mean, obviously she gets some light from here and I do turn her fairly regularly, but I mean, she, none of these little bits were here when I first brought her down here. So it just kind of proves, although they're not perhaps like the ones you might think of, of being low light plants, they can 
absolutely kind of adapt and cope so yeah I just love her I've got as I say my massive one upstairs and another kind of slightly smaller one I just love these plants and my variegated one as well which is not down here but that's the one I got from House of Kojo and I love so that is that little trio there and haha, another golden pothos here this is another one that I propagated and has now turned into a really lovely little plant she's not in the best spot here I used to have wind chimes hanging there and they actually got crushed by the door whenever I opened it because well for obvious reasons um but yeah I don't really know why I've decided to put her there but I don't use that door that much so yeah I just think she looks pretty and down here is a Monstera Deliciosa that unfortunately has been a victim of the tail as you can probably see I wonder who that was but a lot of my plants low down on the floor have got some tail wounds and this is one that really 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 has and I do need to find a better spot for I just am running out of room and yeah it's it's not ideal but yeah I love love her still and I know she will hopefully bounce back when I've got a bit more space to be able to keep her away from Yuli but yeah again one of my all-time favorite plants despite her injuries but yeah she's gorgeous and then I'm ashamed to say up here, this is actually a fake plant, as is that. They're the only two fake plants I own. And I know a lot of people are going to be like, oh, well, you shouldn't have fake plants because you do planty things. But these are two that my friend got for me when I first started getting into houseplants. I must have been about 18 or 19, so about... Oh, God, how old am I? I'm 28. Um, about 10 years ago, <laughs> um, my friend got those for me thinking that because I was getting into houseplants, I loved anything that looked planty. And to be honest, I couldn't really make a lot of other stuff work up there because there's no light and not a lot of space. So I put them there just to kind of fill some gaps. Um, but I'm aware they're not real, guys. I'm aware they're not real. Here I have got another golden pothos. This one you can see it really needs a drink. Its leaves are starting to curl. They're really good plants at letting you know when they are ready for a drink because, yeah, you can just kind of read the signs. This one is in desperate need of repotting. It, it's been needing repotting for months. So again, that's one thing I really do need to make time for. But yeah, it grows ridiculously fast. I've shown you it before in videos kind of, in my pothos video that I made, my care guide video that I made, I think, I want to say about four or five months ago it was about there <laughs> and it's grown so much during that time so yeah great plants really easy to chop and propagate just fab all round and here I've got my Dracaena lemon lime again this one is so 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 adaptable it has been with me everywhere I've lived it's been in next to no light conditions and it's got a little bit of light from this window here this is east facing north south east yeah this is east facing um, and again, you can see I've bubble wrapped the window, so it's kind of up against it, but it's not being harmed by the window. Uh, but yeah, Dracaenas are great, and that one is definitely one of my favourites. Sorry, Yoli, I'm going to have to disrupt you now. Look at her, she's on my pillow. She's got her own bed over there, she just never uses it. Um, but here, I've got my Calathea lepidina. It is a brilliant, brilliant low light plant. I just love calatheas so much. They're such gorgeous plants, but this one's doing really, really well here. When I first got it, I got it from a garden centre. I can't remember whereabouts it was, but it, it did come with thrips. And you can see that quite a lot of thrip damage is still on some of its leaves. It's been treated and isolated and all that sort of stuff. I think I've had it about six months now, but it was not in the best state at that point. And here I have got another Sansevieria Kirkii. Again, like that was actually the both of the Kirkiis were ones that I got into stock in my shop back when it was open. And I just I don't know, I hang <laughs> I hung on to quite a few plants that I probably shouldn't have done when I was meant to be selling them, but those are two that I just decided to keep because again, low light room, it just kind of makes sense. So yes, that is those ones. Coming over to some of my bigger ones. Let's start with the very sad Frida, my fiddle leaf fig. If I position the camera like that, she doesn't look too bad. Well, I mean, she doesn't look great, but she is not doing well. And again, this is another tail victim. Um, the amount of leaves that have been whacked off by Yoli's tail. I, I need to move her. This is one that I actually really do desperately need to move because she's getting whacked to pieces. She's such a beautiful plant and 
to be honest she should be in brighter light conditions anyway but you can see like all around here she's got tears and rips and it's so sad because before i moved here she was in such gorgeous perfect condition and she's being slowly murdered which is a very sad thing but this is her at the moment she's she's coping i'm not going to say she's doing well but she's coping um and then here i've got my elephant ear which surprisingly is doing ridiculously well i said it before in one of my other videos but these grow lights i've got here i did have a grow bar that kind of ran underneath as well to target the lower areas but these grow lights here aren't the strongest grow lights in the world and i really didn't think that they were going to be enough to kind of give her everything she needed because she's such a highlight plant but i mean you can even see she's got this is a new leaf that's a new leaf and there's another new leaf coming up there so she's doing amazingly well i can tell just by looking at her that since i've lived here compared to my old place with more light she has become a little bit kind of thinner and more stretched but that's kind of to be expected um i'm hoping when i'm able to move to my next place with better light then she'll be back in her element but she's not doing badly i think anybody that has an elephant ear will kind of be aware of the the cycle that they go through like i can tell this leaf here it's gonna drop probably in the next week or two basically what happens is you look at all the leaves that are kind of like birthed other leaves and so this is the original leaf and those then that one came and then that one came then this one will probably die off fairly quickly just to kind of make space for the next leaf that's kind of just part of the life cycle of the plants um, it doesn't happen as much during the spring and summer months but yeah i can tell that one is getting ready to go and here i've got my yucca who isn't looking amazing at the moment you can see yeah you can see she had mealybugs recently i came back um it was just before a couple of weeks before christmas i came back after being away and she was just absolutely covered in them and you can see all the damage so i've treated her i kind of completely showered her down isolated her for a few weeks pest sprayed her multiple times and they're all gone now but she firstly obviously has had a quite a lot of sap cleaned out from the pests oh god yeah look at all that damage but yeah she's had all of that kind of taken out of her and then also the only place that i was able to safely kind of leave her to be pest treated was in the upstairs bathroom which really has awful 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 light so she's light deprived and she's bouncing back from pests so she is definitely not looking her finest at the moment but i'm really keeping everything crossed that she will continue to reach her her full potential again because she was great before and to be fair she's looking better than she has been so yeah that is that is my hope um right so let's start with this one this is weird so this one doesn't usually i've been keeping this one upstairs but the weirdest thing has started happening today and i'm gonna sound completely crazy but i'm gonna put the phone in there so you can hear so i was over there this morning with yoli in bed and i heard this noise and it almost sounded like a washing machine was on or something like that and i was like what is that noise where is it coming from and i like i was looking around and I was like, I think it's coming from here. And hang on, I just want to see if it's still doing it. Yeah, it's still doing it. It's so weird. So basically, there's a really weird noise coming from the pot. And it sounds like a washing machine. Hang on. Let me just put the phone in so that you can hear. Like, can you hear that? I just, like, I just don't understand. <laughs> I don't understand what it is. And it stops when I take her out. I mean, obviously the water is not great. It's got quite a lot of algae in it and it needs to be changed. But I, I, it's never, ever happened before. And I'm slightly mystified. So if anybody knows what is causing that, please do let me know. I'm very intrigued. Right, so yes, let's move along here. This is my other jade plant. I was going to say with a lot of these, because obviously that's a highlight plant and that can't really do very well in low lights without becoming really stretched. Um, with a lot of these plants, I kind of change them in and out. Most of the ones down here are fairly low light, but I'll swap them in and out if I think they need it. I mean, this jade plant, I'll kind of move to the upper shelf when I'm doing things with other plants and vice versa. Like my Hoya comes down because again, that's actually fairly low light. Um, but I'll kind of alternate them a bit. But yeah, this is my Crassula ovata J plant who started as the tiniest cutting in the world for my friend's plant that is now absolutely huge. But I mean, she had about four or five leaves and that was, I want to say about a year ago, year and a half ago. And she's a proper little tree now. She's doing very well. 
And then this is my Peperomia Frost, which I propagated from a leaf cutting. I think I showed you this when I very first started it and it started kind of doing stuff. I'm actually gonna, I did make a little video about propagating, propagating Peperomia. Yeah, propagating Peperomia. That sounded like I just said it wrong, but I did say it right. Propagating Peperomia. <laughs> losing my mind um but yes i'm gonna make a video about propagating peperomia because it's so easy to do but there's a few ways that you can do it that are a lot easier than just sticking it in water so that's what i figured out with this one so i will make a video on that soon but it is just such a beautiful plant those kind of frosty kind of blue leaves are just amazing i love blue plants i'm absolutely obsessed with them at the moment but this one is definitely a fave and then this is a ZZ plant, again, brilliant at surviving in low light, so perfectly happy here. This is one that, I mean, you could put pretty much anywhere and it won't complain too much. I mean, I used to have a massive ZZ that I chopped up and propagated and put in my shop, but it was, oh my God, it lived everywhere with me. It was with me for years in kind of my dark, dingy flat in the basement, like everywhere, and it was fine. And then I've got the little variegated spider plant that again, I showed you, I think I, yeah, I repotted this one. I potted this propagation up in my repot and chat video, but it's doing really, really well. It's starting to look like an actual little plant now instead of just a little straggly thing. So yeah, I absolutely love it. And I'm hoping that in a few months time, it will be ready to move up another pot size and then it will kind of properly start filling out and I'll be able to potentially propagate it again from little babies at some point this year. You never know. And then this is my Pilia peperomioides. Again, really gorgeous plant. This one I was gifted by a lovely company called Saturns that I've spoken about before, but this is actually a plant that I hadn't had before. And I don't know why, because obviously Pilias are so kind of popular. They're not expensive plants, but I absolutely love it. It's got a little bit of damage to some of the leaves, but it came like that and I'm not too worried. It's definitely not got pests or anything, but you can see it's got quite a lot of new growth coming up here, which I'm happy about but yeah I'm gonna propagate this at some point because I have I say I haven't had one before this I actually have that's a complete lie I think I might have sold it I don't know why I'd have done that but I have propagated them before and they're really easy to propagate um here I have got a syngonium albo cutting that I've showed you again before but this is one that is desperate to be potted up and I really do need to do it soon because I mean, that root is just basically just one long root that's kind of rewound itself, round itself. Um, but yeah, I've been saying for a very long time that I need to pop this up, so I actually need to do it. So that is on my list for very soon. But how beautiful is that variegation? It's just, I mean, almost all of those are pretty much half moon leaves and they're just so pretty. So, so, so pretty. I had such issues with my Syngonium Albo for ages because it was only pushing out purely white leaves, which although look beautiful, they just don't last very long and they're not kind of sustainable. So yeah, love that one. And my Brantianum, again, doesn't usually live here. It usually lives on the shelf. I, ah, that's why I brought this one down to show you. This one doesn't usually live down here either. I swapped this one out just to show you this one because that one's not doing well. But my Brantianum is doing well. I am really, really pleased with how she's doing. She's just such a beautiful plant. Um, this here, I show, oh, no, I'm not gonna move that because it's gonna fall over. Um, I showed you this teeny tiny leaf here and there was actually another one coming up from it and it got completely stuck as it was trying to unfurl. Like, you know how sometimes they can kind of get stuck in the stems? That's what happened with this one. And there wasn't really much I could do about it. Like I tried very gently with kind of a damp cotton bud to kind of ease it out. And it snapped at the stem, which is that bit that you can see there. So there was no saving that, unfortunately. But it is now producing another little growth point. So I'm hoping that she will continue to look lovely. So over to this. I'm aware that I'm showing you a lot of plants with um, problems. I kind of usually don't but I thought hey why not um so this is a little philodendron varicosum it was a cutting that I got when it was only one leaf 
and it's it's doing okay like i'm not going to say it's doing badly again i got it when the weather was absolutely freezing and it arrived with really bad cold damage and then about three weeks after i got it i also noticed it had spider mites so I don't know if it had come with them or if there had been eggs there or something that I hadn't noticed, but luckily I hadn't put it back in with my other plants yet. But you can see there's some damage from spider mites still there. And obviously like here it's kind of browning a bit and I think that could be cold damage, but I don't know. I've got a big varicosum upstairs, so I like to think it's nothing that I'm kind of doing wrong, but maybe... I don't know. I'm just kind of going to monitor her. I'm going to chop back those brown areas and hopefully... She'll continue to bounce back. Obviously, there's a new growth point there, so that is good. She needs a water, actually. So this right here is the problem child. This is my Anthurium warocvianum, which was the plant that I wanted for such a long time. And as you can tell, I mean, these bits here, these kind of, those bits, they were already there. But I showed you her when I first got her in my repot and chat video, which I think was probably about... A month and a half two months ago now and i don't know like look like you can just tell her vibrancy is just going it's like it's like she's dying and these bits down here are kind of developing brown bits around the edges and kind of crisping down here and i've never had this plant before so i'm just a little bit tentative about what i do to try and kind of revive her um I treated her for root rot when I first got her because her roots were not in a good state. So obviously that doesn't help and she's quite a sensitive plant anyway. So yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I'm really trying with this one, but I'm also just kind of trying to let her have her space, if that makes sense, because I don't want to overwhelm her because she seems very sensitive. So yeah, I'm going to take her back upstairs very gently shortly and we'll keep you posted. Fingers crossed. She will be fine. But then moving on i've got my syngonium albo which has actually produced a completely green leaf here which to be honest i'm not that unhappy about with a lot of variegated plants if they lost their variegation i'd be pretty sad but with this one this is the one that was pushing out purely white leaves for a while and i'm quite happy that it's kind of stabilizing a bit i think i'm actually going to pot these cuttings back into the same pot to kind of make her a bit fuller and then hopefully i'll have a really nice balance of green and white because yeah you can see she's just absolutely stunning there's a really pretty leaf that one there <laughs> i just love that leaf it's so so gorgeous um but yeah she she moves about a bit she i had her in my hanger over there for a while and then i swapped her out but yeah gorgeous plant absolutely love her and here i have another anthurium clarinavium oh i missed one i missed one ah Aha. So this one <laughs> is a Makoda's Patola and this is not the one that I've showed you before. I have a very sad story about the one I showed you before, the one that I got in my House of Kojo order, who was doing so well and I was literally in love with and I feel so bad about. I, without thinking, put her on the edge of the shelf like this, like not completely on, and she fell and her stem snapped right at the bottom, but not completely. And I was reading up on how to propagate them and everything. And I did literally all I could, but I'm sad to say she did not make it. So I was absolutely heartbroken. It was one of my favourite plants. And I was so happy kind of watching her grow because she was so small when I first got her. But anyway, this is her replacement. And she is... Oh, hang on. It's just a bit of soil. I thought I saw a thrip then. Um, yeah, she is a really, really beautiful plant. I love her i don't love her as much yet because i haven't nurtured her from a baby but she's beautiful the seller i got her from on etsy was great packaged her really well she is very pretty she's not the same as my other one but i'm sure in time i will get over it so yeah that's that one this is another anthurium clarinavium this is the one that i've showed you before got hit really badly by thrips back in the summer and you can still see quite a lot of damage but it's not only doing well this is a relatively new leaf has got another new leaf oh another new leaf forming there which is so pretty and then I'm pretty sure yeah you can see there's another little one down there as well so she really is bouncing back but again this isn't her permanent spot i did start her on the shelf but i just kept forgetting to turn her and obviously towards the back she's got leaves pressed up against the back that's not very good for them because they're not receiving any natural light so i alternate her between being on my desk and being over on the windowsill with the rest of those ones but for now 
that's where that's where she's at and then here i've got my philodendron ernestii which i'm gonna again bring down because this one is just doing so well i mean i think the last time i showed you this one this leaf hadn't or maybe only just started unfurling but now i've got a brand new one that has only just unfurled a couple of days ago and it's so delicate and just so beautiful and yeah i'm just i'm absolutely in love with that plant i don't know why people don't talk about this plant more because it is stunning and it's so fast growing this is the one that i got as a cutting and oh, I, I don't know how many months i've had her now but in a ridiculously short space of time oh just see another one there of a new leaf coming in a ridiculously sp short space of time i feel like once a once or twice a month she's popping out new leaves so yeah that is philodendron ernestii which i love i'm not going to talk too much about my string of pearls because you guys know how much I love this one it is one of my favorite plants will always be one of my favorite plants I just absolutely adore it and she is so 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 happy there under the grow lights again she looks like she's about to flower which is bizarre for this time of year she's already done it once out of season but yeah I'm not going to talk anymore about her because I've banged on about her for a very long time in other videos um, this is quite an exciting update. My teeny tiny Alocasia Silver Dragon has given me this gorgeous leaf, which I feel like is kind of, I don't know, I feel like this is kind of like an adolescent teenage years leaf. These are all kind of little babies and this is it. Not quite fully grown, but this is it kind of coming into, coming into what will be its own very soon, I hope. But yeah, just look at that. Such a beautiful plant. And yeah, I think I've had, when was my House of Kojo order? I think I've had that maybe three, four months now. And yeah, she's she's done amazingly well in that time. That little weird wonky leaf was also a new one since I had her as well. So yeah, I am in love and she seems so happy up here. So I'm not doing too much to her. I'm not going to move her too much. This is my Alocasia, Sil uh, Alocasia Silver Dragon, Alocasia Black Velvet. I'm just going to actually move that over as well. And this one is starting to look a little bit sorry for itself since... Oh, you can see it's had two spades or spadex things popping up and I actually tried to pollinate it. I don't know with my um, alocasia poly. I don't know if it's going to work or not. I've never, ever, ever done it before. I've never hand pollinated an uh, alocasia. Oh my God, sorry, my brain. <laughs> you guys, I've realised I've been filming for 36 minutes straight. That's probably why. But for some reason, as I've started... The pollination process which was only a few days ago this leaf now although it's still quite firm and rigid almost looks like it's got a bit of a yellowy tinge to it so i'm wondering if it's thinking about popping its clogs i mean if it is i'm hoping that that's either because the pollination has worked and the plant just needs more of its energy for that or it's going to give me a lovely new leaf but this is the biggest one it's got so the thought of it dying is quite sad but I know from my elephant ear here that alocasia colocasia do tend to do that as kind of part of their cycle but yeah i'll i'll definitely keep you updated with the pollination stuff because as i say i couldn't find much information about it online anywhere so i kind of took a little bit of a stab in the dark um because i as i've mentioned i've got quite interested in pollinating anthuriums i kind of mimicked what i would do for for example my clarinervium with my black velvet and i don't know if that's going to have worked but we will find out here i've got my variegated string of pearls that have been rooting in water for quite a while now and are definitely ready to be potted up look at those roots they're doing so well as with um normal string of pearls you don't actually have to propagate them in water first but i just always like to to just kind of make sure the roots are established and that i'm not going to lose any especially because Oh, look at that bit right there it's just all white yeah it's just such a beautiful beautiful plant so yeah i will need to pop that up soon as well i've got lots on my repotting list need to get a day in soon and then here this is another one that i'll take down i'm not gonna touch my <laughs> alligator um oh my god my hoya cringulates just because um it's very wobbly there I'm actually going to clear a bit of space and take these down as well. It's very wobbly there and it did fall off the shelf a couple of weeks ago and I had soil everywhere and luckily the plant itself was absolutely fine but I think I'm not going to move her again for a little while. 
but this is well, i've showed you before but my anthurium vitii the last time i showed you this plant it had the little baby leaf that was kind of hardening off and now obviously it's more or less fully grown it's reached its kind of full stage of kind of color change because it was really kind of pinky purpley when i showed you it before and also already and i'm so surprised because anthuriums are usually quite slow growing plants already it's got another little growth point here so i am very 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 excited about that and what i am so 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 hoping for is that this plant at some point will produce a spathe and i'll be able to cross pollinate it with my and with my clarinavium for example um that would be an absolute dream because i would love to create some amazing little hybrid plants and as i say if i do i will document the whole thing and i will let you guys know um how it goes and how to do it and all of that stuff um mm, 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 mm. but yes uh next what's next so yeah hoya crinkulate great plant not going to touch it not going to risk it falling it's actually got a piece of paper yeah you can see a piece of paper wedged there kind of keeping it more pushed back so that if it does kind of have any movement then at least it will stay there um right so that is that shelf <laughs> i'm about to show you a plant that I've showed you before and it has always been a favourite of mine and is potentially the biggest tail um, tail hit plant in the room. It is my, I'll pull it out a bit, Anthurium jungle bush. I have shown you this plant so many times before at my old place and when I first moved here before it was down here and oh, I should have known really. I mean, basically Yoli, she will sit by this door when I'm out, she'll sit here and her tail will go and she'll, as you can see from the wall, she'll jump up and she'll scratch and she'll bark. Not that I leave her by herself for ages, but like even if I'm out the room for like half an hour, she's like, where are you? You've left me. And unfortunately this plant has just been clawed to bits, whacked to bits. And oh, I don't really know what to do because again, I have just got no space upstairs. It kind of needs to be down here. And unless I'm going to keep all of my plants on my desk where I work every day I'm not quite sure what to do about it so so yeah that is that's that um I think what I'll probably do at some point probably when I've moved out and I've got a bit more space is I'll chop her back because I mean obviously some of the smaller smaller little leaves are okay but I think I'll chop her back and then just see how she goes but yeah that is one I'm definitely not proud of. I'm very sad about and it just is how it is at the end of the day. It is how it is, but this is where she's at at the moment. Um, right, and then I've got a Sansevieria Laurentii here. And this is, I mean, doesn't need a lot of explanation. It's just a really great low light plant. Um, not maybe your traditional plant that you would put in a hanger, but I've got mine in a hanger because I felt like it. And here is my Philodendron Brazil that I got from the Garden Centre in Pulborough on my first episode of the Garden Centre tour that I've just started. If you haven't watched it already and you enjoy houseplant tours, make sure to follow that series because me and Yoli, oh, I can talk to you in the mirror, me and Yoli are going to be going all around the UK, basically visiting different garden centres, houseplant shops, all that sort of stuff, and giving you little mini tours. So if that's the sort of thing you like, make sure to follow along. Um, but yes, this is my Philodendron Brazil. As you can see, I did repot it. I was a little bit worried because obviously the pot that it was in didn't have very good drainage and I wasn't sure whether or not it was kind of collecting around the roots and whether or not the roots were going to be in a good state. But yeah, I did decide to repot it. I haven't put her in a pretty pot yet, but I just popped her in that hanger and yeah, she seems like she's coping well. So that's that. Um, also, I'm not in my pyjamas. These are, they look like pyjamas. They're just actually funky kind of very chilled trousers but that's what I'm wearing today guys uh this is my philodendron bell marks that I absolutely love I'm also desperate to get my hands on a variegated one uh I said that recently as well but it's just the most beautiful plant so easy to care for like I would say probably the easiest philodendron I own um it's popped out loads of new growth in the time that I've had it but I mean I don't really have, I mean, I don't, I don't have a watering schedule for any of my plants, but I don't really have a kind of anything I stick to with this plant. I think I've watered it once every two, three weeks, maybe. And yeah, she's just been here. She's been perfectly happy. 
Um, again, when I went away, I popped her under the grow lights kind of on the table so she had a little bit more light because I couldn't monitor her in the same way, but I turn her every kind of week or whenever I remember. But look at that lovely new leaf, isn't that pretty? But yeah, and then I think the final one is my, I haven't got anything in there, that's just a storage cupboard, um, but is my big Laurentii snake plant, um, which yes, I've shown you before, I'm saying that a lot, uh, but it is such a great plant. This one, although it has been hit by the tail, hence the fact that I'm propagating bits of it, it has been hit by the tail, it is a lot more hardy, like it's a very robust plants that yeah just is great also so adaptable to pretty much every environment so down here it works really well there even though that's not kind of a direct light spot by any means but yeah i think that's pretty much pretty much all of them oh look at her hello baby oh hello hello oh look at that belly look at that belly I really hope you enjoyed that little bedroom plant tour. If anyone's got any questions, then feel free to pop them down below and I will do my best to help. But yeah, if you did enjoy this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, have a lovely day, and I'll see you in the next video.